Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ritika Gaba, your one and only PhD mentor, advisor and trainer. So many of you would already know that being your PhD mentor and advisor, I take up one-to-one -one personalized sessions with PhD aspirants. In these one-to-one -one sessions, after understanding your complete profile, understanding your future goals and aspirations, your qualifications and your requirements, I guide, I mentor students, I tell them about which are the best universities they should apply for, how should they start preparing for this, which are the areas which are most suitable for them, how should they write an SOP or a research proposal, how should they prepare a viva and so on and so forth. So I completely guide and mentor and advise you in your PhD admission journey. So I have been fortunate enough to guide and interact with plenty of PhD aspirants and based on these interactions today I have prepared a video where I will tell you about the most commonly done mistakes by all PhD aspirants. So here we are the five mistakes which all PhD aspirants should avoid. So mistake number one not exploring all the options and opportunities of PhD available. Tell me one thing students, when you are going to purchase something valuable, say a car, do you go and purchase this car, the very first car that you see in the showroom? Don't you take out time and effort and put your energy into exploring all the options and then based on these, this exploration that you've done for maybe weeks or months, you see all the options which are available to you and then the option which matches your requirement closely, you go and purchase that option. I fail to understand that why don't students put in the same effort while deciding from where to pursue a PhD. PhD is such a rare degree. It is a degree which seldom anybody would think of doing twice. Even if you leave this course midway, you will never attempt hardly anybody attempts to do it again it is a degree which greatly influences your career whether you're from corporate or from teaching line then why not put in some effort some time some energy to explore all the options which are available to you you know it is better to be safe than sorry do not regret later on that why did you not explore and move into a much better brand or more had where you could have got a higher fellowship or you could have got better guidance in terms of research. So explore all your options before zeroing down the university from where you want to do a PhD. Mistake number two is not doing any preparation for the PhD journey. For UG and PG, we see that students are so busy taking coaching, cramping up uh, various books, preparing for their entrance examination or their entrance interviews. But for PhD, the first thing the student does is find the universities where the admissions are open. Don't you think that before applying to a PhD program, you require some kind of preparation? just like you do in your UG and PG. So if you are keen on applying for a July 2023 session for which the admissions are expected to open in April, then you need to start preparing from now. Start doing some reading, start understanding this world of PhD, start understanding what is research and why you want to do a research and what you want to do a research and how are you going to do it. When you get answers to all these questions, then you are best prepared to start applying. So even before you start applying, all these things should be clear in your mind. Mistake number three is not preparing the application documents well in advance and with proper guidance. So many times universities like your central universities, institution of national importance, deemed universities and especially if you are planning to apply into international universities for your PhD then you would be required to submit along with your application some important written documents like an essay or an SOP statement of purpose or a research proposal. 
Now, normally universities who ask for such documents give you at least three to four months of time to prepare these documents. And it is on based on these documents that your application is actually shortlisted. So if a university is giving you three to four months of time, do you think that these are documents which you can prepare on your own without any guidance and that also overnight? If the university is giving you so much of time, use that time. Do your research and understand how these technical documents are to be prepared. Study the guidelines of the university if they have already given you. Otherwise, you can always take up some professional guidance and understand how these documents are written. And then with proper guidance, after proper preparation, write these documents and then upload them. With this, we come to mistake number four, which is students do not prepare for a PhD viva. Now, there are many universities, many private universities who are not going to ask for an SOP or a research proposal from you. They would simply tell you to fill up the application form, then call you for a entrance examination and after that if shortlisted you'll be called for a PhD viva. These universities or any universities most of the time don't mention anything about what they are going to ask you or what they expect of you in the PhD viva and probably because they've not written anything on their website students assume that they they don't need to prepare anything. Students these universities don't write anything because they because at PhD level, they assume that you would understand that you need to prepare. If you're coming to give a PhD viva, you need to know what you are planning to do your PhD and what is your research plan. Otherwise, what do you think they're going to ask you in a, in a viva? This was the same mistake which the very first student whom I guided was doing. She was clearing all the entrance examination but couldn't clear her viva. Once she approached me, I told her that these are the kind of preparation that you are required to do for a viva. These are the kind of questions that uh, students are usually asked. And once she prepared herself well, she cracked three universities simultaneously. So we have already shared the success story of this student on our YouTube page. You can have a look if you want to. So it is important that you prepare yourself well for all these PhD vivas if you want to ensure your success. Mistake number five, not being aware of what happens post PhD admission. More than 50% of the people quit their PhD journey in between. One of the major reasons for this is the PhD journey itself comes as a shock for them. Why? Because they were not aware of what happens after once you've taken admission in your PhD program. You know, how much time and effort do you have to give? Who, how and how do you write this thesis? What is the role of a guide? How many times do you have to give preparation? What is a full-time and a part-time PhD? What is expected from a full-time PhD uh, scholar besides writing a thesis? What is expected of a part-time PhD scholar? What are research papers? How many research papers do you have to write? What are these conference presentations? What is the flow of a PhD thesis? How do you decide which chapters to write? There are so many questions in the minds of a PhD scholar. And because majority students do not know exactly how this PhD journey flows, they somewhere in between find this entire journey very overwhelming and frustrating. So it is important that you understand what you are getting into before actually getting into it. With this, we come to the end of all the five mistakes which PhD aspirants should avoid. I hope you did find the video informative. If in case you are looking for a PhD guide, mentor and advisor who can guide you through your PhD admission journey and can also tell you what happens after you start your PhD journey, then you can always get in touch with me on the number given below. Please don't forget to share, subscribe and like my videos. And thank you so much for watching my videos.